This is part 52 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to keep our application domain models and database schema in sync using migrations in ASP.NET Core. Along the way, we'll also discuss how to add, remove, and apply a migration to our underlying database. We'll also discuss how to undo a migration that is already applied and bring the database schema to its previous state. Finally, we'll also discuss the significance of model snapshot class and underscore underscore EF migration history table. As we develop our application and add new features, our application domain classes change. When the domain classes change, the corresponding changes have to be made to the underlying database schema as well. Otherwise, the database schema goes out of sync and the application does not work as expected. However, it's important to remember not to manually make these changes to the database schema. We use migrations to keep the database schema in sync as the application domain classes change. Let's understand this with an example. If we take a look at our create employee form, notice at the moment we are only capturing name, email, department. We also want to be able to upload employee photo. So for that, we need a new field. We'll call it photo path and then provide a file upload control here using which the user can upload a photo. In the models folder, here is our employee model class. At the moment, we have ID, name, email and department properties. We now need a new property to capture the photo path of the employee. The data type of the property is going to be string and let's name the property photo path. Now, if we take a look at the underlying employees database table, notice we only have columns for ID, name, email and department properties. We do not have a corresponding column in this table for the new property that we have just added which is photo path. Now to bring our database schema in sync with our application model classes in Entity Framework Core, we use migrations. Before we add a new migration, let's make a deliberate typographical error with this property. Let's remove the letter H in the photo path property and then add a new migration. To add a new migration, we use Package Manager Console in Visual Studio. To get to Package Manager Console, click on View, Other Windows and then Package Manager Console. To add a new migration, we use add migration command. Let's name this migration add photo path column. Notice a new file that contains the migration code is added and you can find this file in the migrations folder. Notice the file name contains a timestamp and underscore and then the name that we provided when we added this migration. The class in this file has the same name as our migration and this class contains two methods up and down. The up method contains the code to apply the changes that we made to the model class to our underlying database table. We added photopath property to our employee model class. So the code in this up method is adding photopath column to the underlying employee table down method will undo this changes. Up method adds this column, down method drops that photo path column. When we add a new migration, that command, in addition to adding this file which contains our migration code, it also updates this file app db context model snapshot dot cs. Notice the name of this file is made up of our application db context class. Our application db context class is app db context. So app db context and then model snapshot. As the name implies, this file contains the snapshot of your current model. This file is created when the first migration is added and updated with each subsequent migration. EF Core Migrations API uses this file to determine what has changed when adding the next migration. If we take a look at the contents of this file, notice it contains a snapshot of our current model. At the moment, our employee model class contains these properties, ID, department, email, name and photo path. Photo path is the new property that we just added. Now, when we add another new migration, EF Core uses this file to determine what has changed. Let's actually add another new migration. But before that, let's add a new property to our employee model class. Let's name this property sum property. 
Now let's add another migration. Let's name this migration add some property. Notice our new migration file is generated and we also have a warning here. Our model snapshot file appdb context model snapshot dot cs has been changed externally. Do you want to reload it? Remember, every time we add a new migration, the model snapshot file is updated with our current application model snapshot. Since this file is open in the editor and since it has been modified, it's asking us if we want to reload it. Yes, we do want to reload it. At this point, if we take a look at our model snapshot file, Notice it has our new property, sum property. At the moment, we have got two migrations, add photo path column, add sum property. Now to remove a migration, we use remove migration command. Notice the message here, removing migration, add some property. So it removed that migration file and it also reverted the model snapshot file. Since the model snapshot file has changed, it's again asking us if we want to reload it. Yes, we do want to reload it. Now, if we look in the migrations folder, notice the migration file underscore add some property is removed from here. Also, the property some property is removed from the model snapshot file. Next, we want to remove this migration as well add photo path column. So from our package manager console window, let's execute remove migration command once again. There we go. The migration underscore add photo path column is removed. The model snapshot file is also updated. And if we look in the migrations folder, the respective migration file is deleted. Now let's try to remove this migration as well. Alter employees seed data. So from the package manager console window, let's execute remove migration command one more time. Notice we are not able to remove this migration. We have an error message. The migration alter employee seed data has already been applied to the database. Revert it and try again. And if we look in the migrations folder, we still have that migration file alter employee seed data. So the important point to keep in mind is remove migration command only removes one migration at a time and that too only the latest migration that is not yet applied to the database. If all the migrations are already applied, executing this remove migration command throws an exception. The migration has already been applied to the database, revert it and try again. The obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is how to remove a migration that is already applied to the database. Let's understand that with an example. First, from our employee model class, let's remove this property and then add a new migration. Notice add photo path column migration is added. Let's apply it to the database by executing update database command. The migration is applied to the database. We can confirm it by refreshing our table and then take a look at the columns. Notice we have our new column photo path here. Now let's add another new migration. First, within our employee model class, let's include that sum property back, save our changes and then go to the package manager console, use add dash migration command and let's call this migration add some property. Migration added. Let's apply this migration also to the database by executing update database command. Migration applied. So at this point, all the migrations that we have in this migrations folder are applied to the database. So when we execute remove migration command from the package manager console window, we get an error. There we go. The migration has already been applied to the database. Revert it and try again. To remove a migration that is already applied to the database, we have to first revert it. To revert a migration, we use update database command. Now if we refresh, the employee is stable within SQL Server Object Explorer window. Notice we have both the columns photo path and some property. 
that were added by the last two migrations that we applied. We have another table here with name underscore underscore EF migration history table. Let's view the data that we have in this table. This table is created by Entity Framework Core when we executed our first migration. It is used to keep track of all the migrations that are applied to the database. As you can see, there is an entry for every migration that we applied. Now, if we take a look at our employees table, notice we misspelled footpath column and we don't need this sum property column. Basically, we want to undo the changes that these two last migrations made to our database schema. We want our database to be in the same state as it was in when we executed this migration, alter employees C data. And to achieve that, we use update database command. And then specify this migration name, alter employees C data. There we go. The command completed successfully. So the changes that these two migrations made to our database schema are reverted. To confirm that, let's reload the data that we have in this underscore underscore EF migration history table. Notice we don't have the entries for the last two migrations anymore. Now when we refresh the columns within our employees table, notice both the columns photo path and some property are gone. At this point, we can remove these two migrations, add photopath column and add some property. To remove both of these migrations, we have to execute remove migration command twice. The first time we execute remove migration command, it's going to remove the latest migration that is not yet applied. In our case, this add some property migration. Let's execute remove migration one more time. There we go. The other migration, add photopath column, is also removed. Now, in our employee model class, let's correct the photopath property name. And we don't need this sum property, so let's delete that and then add a new migration. Let's name this migration, add photopath column. Now let's execute the migration using update database command. There we go. The migration is applied. In our next video, we'll discuss how to upload employee photo and then store the photo path in this photo path column of our employees table. We use migrations to keep domain models and database schema in sync. To add a new migration, use add migration command. To update the database with the latest migration, use update database command. To remove the latest migration that is not yet applied to the database, use remove migration command. Underscore underscore EF migration history table is used to keep track of the migrations that are applied to the database. Model snapshot.cs file contains the snapshot of the current model and is used to determine what has changed when adding the next migration. To remove the migration that is already applied to the database, first use the update database command to undo the database changes applied by the migration. Next, use remove migration command to remove the migration code file. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.